All right, so uh, what we're looking at here, this lesson is translating English to math. Now, I will tell you this, is that uh, in any grade I teach, in any level, any grade, the hardest thing for people is word problems, when you start mixing math and English. So that's what uh, this lesson's all about. All right, so again, there's some key words here, <clears throat> in case you don't know these words or haven't heard them before, uh, such as sum, and that, again, that is the addition or the answer to an addition question. Uh, when we talk about the difference, which we use for slope, uh, that's the answer to a subtraction question. Uh, product is the answer to a multiplication question. And here's a weird one a lot of people haven't heard of, the quotient. And that is the answer to a division question. I'm going to pop another one in here. And uh, I know that this is key, is that of, that means multiply. And per, that means divide. So there's a couple other conversions of English uh, to math, all right? So of means multiply, per means divide. All right, so here's what I like to do, because I'll be honest with you, I was terrible with English when I was younger, and so word problems and converting English to math uh, was a, definitely a struggle for me. So here, I'm just going to give you a, a tip on how I do go through word problems. All right, so the first off here is we're going to translate the following sentence to algebraic expressions. That's a nice way of saying uh, draw a polynomial, make a polynomial. All right, now, here's what I do. I take it step by step. Add 8, all right, so I just know that that means plus 8. Add 8. 2, 5 times W. Well, that means 5W. All right, so if I was to translate this, well, I would say that this is 8 plus 5W. All right, or you could write it the other way around, but I'm just writing it just the way the words are telling me. Okay, now, here we go on the next one. Again, just kind of breaking it down and how I would do this. So 2 is subtracted from 1 half of Y. All right, so 1 half of Y is one half of, ah, multiply, so one half y. So two is subtracted from one half y. And so if I was, whoops, get rid of that. If I was to write this equation out, I know that one half of y or one half times y is two is going to be subtracted from it. So I'm gonna put a, minus 2. Alright, so again, it's just trying to break down um, what is, what's happening here with the English to the math. Alright, now, uh, example 3, 4 fifths of, alright, so 4 fifths, I break that down, that is 4, it's a fraction, 4 fifths of, again, multiply the quotient of 8 and 9, or sorry, x and 9, quotient, the answer to division question. So that means I'm taking x and I'm dividing it by 9. And when you see this, the quotient of x and 9, the first one is your numerator, the second one will be your denominator. All right, so again, I'm just trying to break it down into pieces, because again, that's how I did it when I was younger, because I just had no idea with English. Could do the math, couldn't do the English. All right, so uh, that's a few of them. All right, so again, using some of the words, getting used to some of the words. All right, now, uh, translate the following sentences to algebraic expressions, so that's polynomials, and find the numbers. So we're gonna actually come up with a, an equation here. All right, so, Again, I'm going to look at twice the difference between 4 and a number uh, is 16. Okay, so sometimes that's really wordy, right? Twice the difference between 4 and a number is 16. So sometimes what I do is I don't always start at the beginning. Uh, sometimes I just try to break it down into pieces. So like this part here, is 16 equals is 16. So I've got that part down. All right, now twice the difference, twice. 
That means we're multiplying something by two. All right, so I got this twice part in there. Now, here's the next part I'm looking at. Twice the difference between four and a number. Now, if I don't know what a number is, I'm going to call it x. Now, the difference, again, from the top of our page, the difference is the answer to a subtraction question. So if I have the difference between 4 and a number, I'm looking at uh, should be x minus 4. All right, so that's the difference between 4 and a number. You take 4 away from a number, and it equals 16. All right, so now I can solve this equation. And again, I'm not sure what your teachers taught you in grade 9, but uh, there's the distributive property, which I don't call it that. But when you have a number in front of brackets, I can call it the rainbow rule, where I go 2 times x and then 2 times a minus 4. All right, and so if I figure that out, well, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times minus 4 is a minus 8. And again, over here, I have the equation to finish it off is equal to 16. All right, now this little review of solving equations. Uh, I'm going to bring this negative 8 over to the other side because, again, when you're solving equations, you want to get your letters to one side, numbers to the other. And so I have 2x equals 16. But again, because that 8, negative 8, sorry, switch sides, switch a sign. That's something we looked at this morning even. So plus uh, 8. All right, uh, I do a little math. Well, I have 2x is equal to, well, I got 16 plus 8. Uh, that is 24. All right, now I'm running out of room here, but we'll uh, move it over. But uh, I got to divide by my numerical coefficient, so which is 2, the number in front of my variable. And uh, if I cut 24 in half, x is equal to 12. Again, breaking the English statement down into math and a little bit of review of uh, of solving equations. All right, uh, let's see. The next one, example five. Three more than five times a number is 23. Find the number. So again, I don't have to do these in order, but I do know is is equal. And well, 23 is 23, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, uh, Three more than five times a number. Well, again, we have a number, so I'm going to call that x. And five times means five times x. And three more than five times a number. So I'm going to add three, because three more. Not three times it, but three more, or three, you know, three of. And so if I rewrote this, again, I just broke this down, 3 more than 5 times the number. So I'm going to add 3 to this 5x, and it is 23. So if I was to rewrite this statement, now that I've broken down, I would have 5x plus 3 more is equal to 23. All right, and again, solving equations, I'm going to move that 3 over to the other side. And as I've said today many times, changes side, it changes sign. So I have 23 and then minus 3 because it switched sides. All right, and again, solving for x, uh, I can do a little bit of math there. Well, 23 minus 3 is 20. And then the last step, to get the x by itself, i got to divide by my numerical coefficient, which is 5. And so uh, those fives divide each other out. And so x is 20 divided by 5, which is 4. There we go. Again, just breaking down the English into math and then solve. All right. Uh, ooh, this one looks wordy. Okay, so they all look wordy to me. <laughs> all right, so again, I'm going to break it down. All right, so I, I always read these things the first time. And then I go back and try to translate. So a number plus the quotient of 56 and 7 is 11. Okay, wordy again. But a number plus. So x plus. Okay, I got that part down. There we go. The quotient of 56 and 7 is 11. Ugh, that middle part, I'm going to save that part. But this is 11. I know that's equals. 11. 
Okay, now it's this part right here, the quotient of 56 and 7. Again, a quotient is the answer to division question. And we have 56, so that's the first number, divided by 7. So again, I always like to sometimes, especially for these wordy ones, kind of go over it again and check it out. And so what we're looking at here is uh, a number. So there's x plus the quotient of 56 and 7. There it is. Uh, division question is equal to 11. All right. And so now I can, uh, again, I've said this today, lot, lots of relating today, but uh, a divided by question is just, or a fraction is just a divided by question. It's not done yet. And so 56 uh, divided by 7 is 8. And again, it equals 11. All right, so now solving this equation, because we've got the English out of the way, I'm going to move that 8 to the other side. All right, so again, it's switching sides. It's going over that equal sign, and so it's going to become a minus 8. And x is all by itself already, so I uh, just figure out 11 minus 8, and we get a 3. There we go. Any questions so far? Again, this is tough. I always find this stuff st this stuff tough. Okay, uh, next one here. Come on, technology. There we go. All right. Um, so this is an example. We got a graph. All right. We're gonna write an equation that relates the height of the water in the tank and time, and uh, we're gonna use the equation. All right, so something we've done before using the equation, but here we again, we got a bunch of words and uh, we're gonna make some math out of it. So water is slowly draining out of a large tank, 32 meters high, all right, which is completely full at the start. Now the height, H in meters of the water in the tank is related to the time in hours, okay, that it takes to drain the tank. Now, if the tank drains at two meters per hour, complete the graph below. All right, so I got to analyze this situation. So first off, this tank is 32 meters high and it's fully, uh, it's completely full at the start. So that means right here, my height at the very beginning is 32. All right. Now, this tank is draining at two meters per hour. So if it's draining, draining, that means this number is going down by two per hour. So we have... Ah, uh, this little error here, this is, shouldn't be seconds, this should be hours. And that means that now that that's one hour's passed by, this height here should be 30. All right, uh, after two hours, well, it's going to drop another two meters, so it's be 28. Let's see if we can line those up. There we go. Uh, another hour goes by. We're down to 26, again, dropping two. And finally, uh, let's see here, two more hours goes by, we're at 24. All right, now, we are going to graph the data. All right, so again, and this is something I mentioned before, when you're graphing and you have a table of values, the X's are on the left, your Y's are on the right. And so on my axis, my X axis here, that is where I'm gonna put time. All right, in hours. And I look at my table here because it's going to help me set up my graph. I have to go up to four. Uh, I wonder if I can go every two spaces here. So if that would be one hour, two hours, three, four hours. Yeah, it fits. So we're going to go with that. Two, three, and four. All right. And then on my y axis, what's the highest number I have here? 32. Yikes. Uh, what's divisible? How about four? Four, eight, twelve. No, that's not going to fit. Uh, how about eight? Uh, eight, sixteen, uh, twenty-four, thirty-two. That fits. Okay, so on this y-axis here, we're going to have our height. All right, see if I can write that in there. All right, and each block is going to be worth eight meters. So eight, got to go up by the same amounts, consistent. All right, 16, and we have to start at zero here. All right, and uh, add another eight, we get 24. 
and then 32 right there. Okay. All right, now to graph the data. So again, at zero time, we have a height of 32. After one hour, we have a height of 30. So let's see here. Uh, roughly, where is that going to be? So uh, it's eight total. So four is halfway. That's 28. So it's going to be up here a bit. All right, then at uh, two hours, we're at 28. So uh, it's just going to be, whoops, yep, that's right in there, right about there. Okay, uh, after three hours, we're at 26. That, again, is just a little bit lower. All right. This one might have been a little too low. Throw it up there a bit. Okay, and then lastly, four is 24. All right. Bit of a pitiful graph here, but uh, doing my best with being a smart with the uh, mouse. All right, so there's my line. Okay. Whoops. All right. So we got, we've graphed the information. Now, write an equation that relates the height of the water and the time. All right, now, this is something we did before. We didn't come up with our own graphs, but we have done it. And so what I'm going to use is the rise, I'm going to find my slope. And my y-intercept, right? Anytime we're coming up with an equation, we need those two things. I'm going to say one of them is easy. We can find it right now. Uh, can somebody tell me uh, slope or the y-intercept? Which one would I have right now? The y-intercept is 32 by the looks of it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And in fact, our graph confirms it, right? Because it's where zero, where your x value is zero because you haven't gone left or right at all. So you have to be on the y-axis. Just like earlier today, we looked at the x-intercept, the y is always zero. Well, the y-intercept, the x is always zero. So yeah, the y-intercept is 32. All right, but now I gotta find my slope. All right, so again, you need two points. And what I'm gonna use here, because I want the good points, I'm gonna use the first one and the last one. All right, so I put them in, I did them all in big, I'm gonna do big green dots. Now we know this one is 32. Right, and I know this one down here is right on 24, so that's why I like it. Now, when you're finding the slope, you have to use uh, rise over run. Again, you can only go from point to point by going up and down, left and right. So I'm going to go this way, down, and then over. Now, I'm dropping from here to here. So what would my uh, rise be, I guess you could call it? I'm going from 32 to 24. Negative 8. Yeah, dropping, right? So it's not much of a rise, but yeah, I'm dropping eight. And then on my x-axis, I move over to the right, and you can see I'm moving eight blocks, but really, I've gone from zero over to four. And so the equation, because again, all we need is our, um, our slope and our y-intercept, I could say the equation is y equals again my slope uh you know what i can i'm going to convert this to a decimal because we're going to use this equation right but it's not going to be a decimal because negative eight divided by four is negative two and so my equation is going to be negative two x and my y intercept is a positive 32. all right last part uh, use the equation. Whoa, there it is. So I'm going to write that equation down again. Y equals negative 2x plus uh, 32. Now something I've said again the last couple of days is that uh, if I'm solving something for this equation, I need to know everything but one thing. I have a y and an x here. So one of these I know. Can anybody help me out and tell me which one I know? Because I'm looking at, uh, this is saying, use the equation. At what time is the tank expected to be empty? So can somebody no, tell me? Y is zero. Y is zero. Because when you're empty, your height, whoops, your height is zero, right? And that is, if you look at our axis, our Y axis is height. So yeah, Y is zero. All right. So now I'm going to use my equation. This is something we did before, right? Zero is equal, whoops, is equal to negative 2x plus 32. 
All right, and again, I'm solving this equation, so uh, I gotta get my variables on one side, numbers on the other. I'm gonna move this negative two X over to the other side. All right, so again, when it changes sides, it changes sign. So it becomes a positive two X and it equals 32. And our last step, divide by our numerical coefficient. And so our X value is going to be 32 divided by two, which is 16. And on our X axis, if you look up, it was time, which is in hours. So it would take 16 hours for this tank to empty. There we go. So again, what we had to do in the first part there is break down equations or break down English and make them equations. And then here we have a word problem where you have to take that language, create a table of values, and then graph it like we've been doing and use the information on the graph to find our slope and our y-intercept to come up with the equation. Whoa. And then, of course, figure stuff out, which we've done before, but just did a little differently. That's all. All right, let's see here. Whoops.